This video will demonstrate Delta Products Ethernet IP solution. Today we will show you how to connect an Allen Bradley PLC to our Delta servo drives using an Ethernet IP gateway pre-programmed by Delta Products. The Delta servo drives will be talking to the Allen Bradley PLC through this gateway. The gateway will communicate to the Allen Bradley PLC using Ethernet IP and will then send commands to the drives using Modbus. To perform this function, we need to use two function blocks or add-on instructions in the Allen Bradley PLC. The first one is used for each access that is connected and controls the I.O. that is used on the drive by the Allen Bradley PLC. We can use up to 30 axes connected to the PLC in this configuration. The next function block is required to set up the communications between the Allen Bradley PLC and the gateway and is only needed once in the program. This will also set up the communications between the gateway and the servo drives. Now we will show you the hardware that's being used for this test. Here in this demo we have two ASDA A2 servo drives. We also have a Compact Logics PLC from Allen Bradley, and we have our gateway. To begin, we make the connections to the PLC. We use a standard Cat5 Ethernet cable to connect our PLC to the gateway. The connection between the gateway and the servo drives is handled over Modbus. We connect our RS-485 port from the gateway to the CN3 connector on the servo drives. After connecting our hardware together, we will begin by creating a new project in Allen Bradley's RS Logic software. Once the project is created, our next step is to make a new program and add our add-on instructions into the program. As you recall, there are two add-on instructions that we will need to add to our program. The first is a setup add-on instruction that will set up our communications. Once the add-on instruction has finished importing, we can add it to our program like so. Adding this add-on instruction to the program sets up communications between the Allen Bradley PLC and the gateway. The second is on a per axis basis, one needed for each servo drive. This add-on instruction is going to handle the inputs and outputs of every servo drive connected to our network. Since our example has two servo drives in the system, we will add two add-on instructions to our program, one for each servo drive. At this point we will begin to declare the variables used in our add-on instruction. Here you can see that we have now declared variables for all of the I.O. on the add-on instructions. At this point we can begin testing and see how our program is performing. Now we will download the program to the Allen Bradley PLC and begin testing. We've chosen station ID 3 and 4 for the servo drives. We will start in this first test by servoing on the motor and jogging the motor. The video on the left hand side of the screen will show the activity of the servo drives in response to the commands sent to the add-on instructions in the RS Logic software.
This add-on instruction can also detect a communication error in this example by pulling the communication cable. This appears as a flag set in the add-on instruction. Now we are going to stop jogging the motors and turn the servos off by setting the bits in the add-on instruction. Here we have added a few more rungs to our ladder program to demonstrate using typical ladder programming to set and clear the bits. In most cases, you will not access the add-on instruction directly, but will set and clear bits using coils in your ladder program. This is demonstrated here. Note that you must use the same name of the variable that you use in your add-on instruction to reference the coil in your program if you wish it to work correctly. Here you can see that once again we have enabled the servo drives and are about to begin jogging both of the servo motors using bits on the Allen Bradley software. Here we can also so besides toggling bits on the servo drive we can also write values to the drive like jog speed. Here we are showing changing the jog speed on the drive using the Allen Bradley software. Next we will show you how to trigger internal position commands stored in the servo drive in the PR registers. We'll also show how to be able to switch from PR or position register mode to PT or pulse train mode. Here we have ladder programming that when set will trigger the drive to switch into PR mode and also set the PR command to be issued. The next bit sets up the PR trigger which initiates the motion. We will start by toggling our bit which switches us into PR mode and sets the PR command to be used. Now we are ready to trigger our PR toggle which will start the motion as you can see in the top right of the video. Note that we are able to monitor the status of the PR command in the add-on instruction here. We can monitor the state of the PR command, whether it's stopped, whether it's busy. Note that we can still start a jog move for the first axis without any effect on the second. Here we can see that our PR move has completed and the status of the PR command has changed in the add-on instruction. This completes our demonstration of the Ethernet IP solution for Delta's servo drives.